help if I unmuted the microphone. Welcome back. If you joined us for our earlier session today, then you'll know that we explored long form mobile content, including 30 minute TV features, series and documentaries. Now, in this session on mobile journalism, we're going to examine how different news broadcasters have adapted to and in some cases integrated mobile journalism into their news gathering workflows. Joining me for this session from RTE in Ireland is Philip Bromwell. From RAI Italy is Nico Piro. From NRK Norway, John Inge Johansson. And from MTV Finland, Sara Rantanen. So now we're going to hop from Dublin in Ireland all the way down to Italy, where Nico Piro is hopefully standing by. Nico, are you able to hear me okay? Hi, hi everybody. I'm so excited to join you and our great community. We, we, we can see you okay, but or sorry, we can hear you perfectly, but we're not actually seeing you just yet, Nico. We'll give it a second to buffer, I guess. Mm. Yep. I don't know. Let me change the ah, camera. Ah, there we are. You're there. We see you. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> That's an emergency camera. The first one failed. No, oh, never mind. You know, it's all live. That's the fun of it, I guess. So um, anyway, how are things? I know that you have been out at the front line, like over the last couple of weeks, you've been right at the front line, basically filming COVID up close, if you will. Um, do you want to talk to the audience a little bit about your journey to where you are today first? Uh, yes, that, that's strange because I'm a foreign affair staff member. So I usually cover crisis and conflicts, something uh happening very far away from my my country from italy and a month ago when uh, the epidemic uh arrived in italy uh, and hit italy very hard i volunteered to help my fellow colleagues um going all, all over italy to cover what was happening and uh, it's been a great uh, experience i mostly covered uh, what I usually do abroad, I mean, the wretched of the hurt, the the last one, the poor people, uh, all the people who are who have been hit hard by by this epidemic, by the cry, the, the uh, linked uh, economic crisis. And last week, instead, I was in Bergamo. That, as you know, is the eye of the storm, is the most affected area in Italy, one of the most affected area in Italy, and. Uh, my phone was uh, uh, a great tool again to tell stories. Okay, I, I, we will we will go to Bergamo. We will have a look at some of the amazing content that you shot because I know you, you've shared it recently enough on social media anyway. But I'm, I'm really intrigued by the idea that you know, as a correspondent, that you often end up in in conflict zones and in hostile environments because. Back in the day when we were implementing RTE uh, Mojo, it was very much a case of that was exactly when you would not deploy a Mojo. That's when you definitely wanted a two or possibly a three person crew. So what's been your experience of reporting, you know, with a mobile phone in, in conflict and war zones? Uh, first of all, everything began in 2014 when uh, I wanted to be a better journalist. I wanted to take control of uh, all the process uh, from shooting to editing to deliver my, my piece. Uh, don't get me wrong. I was so lucky to, I had worked with great cameramen, but I was tired of being behind their shoulder I mean, saying to this, to that. I wanted, I mean, to take the ball in my hands. Uh, I spent 12 years of assignment going in and out of Afghanistan, which is uh, uh, the place I love the most. And uh, it's a forgotten crisis. And uh, I love that country. I love Afghan people. And there are a lot of stories that deserve to be told. And uh, a year ago in November, I was in Kabul, 2018, uh, with, uh, I, I was going out and there was also another TV crew, four people crew, cameraman, editor, journalist, and uh, the sound engineer. They went out with four armor uh, uh, SUVs and with 12 people of the security details. Uh, I was out with uh, a Toyota Corolla from 1992, my driver, my interpreter, low profile, and I could do things that were almost impossible for them. So uh, um, minimizing the camera helps you. It's, it's a piece of the mosaic to, uh, uh, let's say, mitigate the risk. It's a matter of tactical approach, and a camera is part of it. Uh, Afghanistan is the most dangerous place in the world to work as a journalist. This means that uh, the less you declare, you show that you are a journalist, the better it is. It's true for the Afghan, my heroic, our heroic Afghan colleagues, 
is true for foreigners, which are also who are also target of possible kidnapping. So, what can I tell you? The, a phone can be a very powerful tool. Tool, as you know, I use multiple tools. I use a mirrorless camera. I use my iPhones, and I use uh, a GoPro. So uh, I like to change different tools according to the situation, but definitely to lower the risk, a phone it's a it's a it's a it's a great um, piece in that mosaic. Mm -hmm. Very good, um, I, I, and I like the idea that you you kind of you almost get an anonymity because you can blend in with the crowd when you have a phone because you know pretty much everyone else has a yeah. phone as well. Um, I, interesting that in the previous session, one of the questions I asked was, "What is the one feature that you'd like most smartphones to get?" And three of the four panelists said, "Better zoom would be a huge um, thing." So, are you augmenting? the limitations of zoom on the phone by simply jumping off to a mirrorless with a better lens is that how you approach it or, or how do you get around that uh i use mirrorless uh it depends zooming it's part of me using mirrorless i see a mirrorless like a companion of my phone mm -hmm. uh but most of all is about i have to say uh weather condition uh sounds strange but uh unfortunately phone have a, a very low um, um, working temperature, the maximum working temperature doesn't mix, doesn't match with many of the environment I'm usually in. Kabul in, in the summer, uh, Lashkarga or uh, other, uh, the, the southeast of the country, as Sierra Leone. When I was in 2015 in Sierra Leone with the, uh, covering the Ebola epidemics, uh, the phone and the mirrorless at the same time went under stress very, very easily because mm. of the, of the uh, external temperature. Mm, interesting. Now, I think we have a clip of um, one of the pieces that you did in Afghanistan. I guess this must be a mix of, of different cameras, or is this strictly just phone? What tell us? No, about there the is feature? just a little, uh, little uh, insert of a GoPro. Okay, and warning, it's disturbing content. We see that. No, okay. When you are stuck in traffic, you probably think about the same things that every commuter in the Western world thinks about. Being late for the gym, your friend who's waiting for you for a cocktail, the dinner you have to cook for your family. This is not what happens when you are stuck in traffic in Kabul. Here you think about what can go wrong you think about being the accidental victim of a suicide bomber. Every second is longer while you are a sitting duck, especially if you are close to a potential target like a government bomber. This is the everyday life in the Afghan capital, and more or less, it's the everyday life in many war zones. Yes. People try to lead a normal life. They go to the state. Okay, we'll, we'll, I think we'll just mute the sound of that one. But yeah. um, so th this was, I'm just interested about your workflow now. So you said it was shot basically between a GoPro and possibly another camera too. How did you edit this? Was this cut on a laptop or would you have cut this in LumaFusion or how did you go about yes, it? Yes, this was cut on a laptop because I had a longer time. I mean, uh, this is not a piece for my news bulletin. This, I did it uh, because, I mean, it, it's, it's a five minute long, which is a, an, is an, an, an unusual size. And I wanted to do, uh, I mean, I had a longer time to do it. Basically, this, is, this came out uh, for, the, for my last book presentation, for my last book tours. Oh, okay, very good, very good. Okay, um, I mean, I, I'm, I'm both intrigued and slightly in awe of you for, for you know, the, the Kahunis basically to work in a war zone on your own. I, I have to be honest. I think, um, you have to have a very special spine and determination to be able to do this, man. So I, I really do. Um, I, I'm very, very impressed and in awe of what you've done. Um, let's take the journey back, back home a little bit, if you will, and and let's talk about life back in Italy since uh, yes. COVID kicked off. Um, so you, as you said earlier, you've already been out in the fields, you've been reporting, but I mean, some of the f stuff that I've seen on social media, you literally have been right at the front line. I mean, this is not reporting from home. This is in the middle of the hospital. Do you want to talk to us a little bit about that experience? Uh, yes, honestly, I mean, if I, if I have to compare my experience during the Ebola epidemic in Africa and now, it's, it's, it's different because Ebola is a, a high death rate, 60, 90% 
but it's easier to see someone who, who can be potentially contagious. Nowadays, instead, um, every, I mean, let me say something. You can, of, co of course, don't get me wrong, but you can even trust your, your own beloved kids. Everybody can be uh, contagious, can be a virus carrier. So you have to be very, very careful. I mean, it's not just the hospital, it's the homeless, uh, homeless shelter, it's the homeless uh, cafeteria, it's the food distribution. And uh, usually my company uh, follow the standard workflow, cameramen and journalists. Uh, but working in Italy, I asked, and, and I mean, they, they gave me the green light to work by myself uh, for multiple reasons, because th this is the way I work and it's my uh, experience abroad, but also for safety reason. I mean, you are in a car for six, seven hours, you spend, the, a cameraman is your brother. Mm -hmm. you, you, your life is, is, is the, you and your cameraman are the same person. But nowadays, I mean, I feel, I mean, I feel better on my own. Okay. And uh, I, let's, let's roll the pictures while you're talking over them, yeah. actually, because this is you getting prepared here, yeah. Entrare e uscire dalla zona rossa richiede una lunga e meticolosa procedura di vestizione e di decontaminazione. Oltre quella porta, in agguato, c'è il contagio. Quello che vedete è un ospedale da circa 140 posti dedicato solo a pazienti Covid. Grazie all'impegno degli artigiani locali e degli alpini in congedo è stato costruito a tempo di record nei padiglioni della Fiera di Bergamo. Ma questo ospedale è unico anche per un altro motivo. Mette insieme esperienze diverse, quella della sanità pubblica e gestito dalla locale azienda ospedaliera, ma anche quella di emergency, maturata tra l'epidemia di Ebola in Africa e la guerra in Afghanistan. Quello che mi dicono i colleghi quando appunto condividiamo queste misure che abbiamo messo in atto durante l'Ebola e spieghiamo su quali principi si basano e come declinarle in questo tipo di di epidemia di solito le trovano utili cioè stanno ad ascoltare e, e vanno a condividere quello che noi stiamo dicendo al lavoro ci sono anche paramedici reclutati dalla protezione civile e un contingente di medici militari russi a coordinare esperienze metodi culture e lingue diverse c'è un medico bergamasco questa struttura diventa strategica per quanto riguarda la co so I'm, I'm just interested to get a little bit of the backstory on this one. So yeah. again, this is you reporting on your own. You're clearly using a mix of cameras here. This one looks like a 360 camera. Talk me through how you approach this. No, I approach this. Uh, first of all, I had no doubt. I went in with my phone. Uh, second, I had a GoPro on my, on my head, but unfortunately the shield uh, created a sort of distortion. So I could use just a few shots from okay. the GoPro. Uh, about the iPhone, why did I decide to go in with the iPhone? For two main reasons. And I have also a backstage clip, which maybe you can roll in. Uh, sure. Why going into, uh, into the hospital with, into the, the this is, listen, this is the, uh, a new ICU. My camera was the first camera to enter this new ICU, it has been built in a record time, eight days, in the pavilion of the exhibition center in Bergamo. So it's a miracle. Why I went in with the phone? Two reasons. First, first of all, uh, it, with different priorities. First of all, uh, it's easier to sanitize um, a phone. Uh, you can spray it, IP63, uh, so you can spray it with alcohol, so you can easily sanitize it up after, I mean, getting out of that. Second, uh, because uh, uh, when you use a standard camera with, uh, with all the gears, it's very easy to break your gloves. And third, which is the most important point, is empathy. Uh, I have spent hours, hours, and hours of my assignment in ER rooms. Uh, in Kabul, you see a door, and from that door, uh, every minute you have during a mass casualty, you have people entering, covered in blood, with missing limbs. And the, thing, the two things you want to do is, first of all, you don't want to create problems to health workers mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they are saving lives. And second, because you can arm themselves. If you, I mean, hit a paramedic with, with a blade, he can wound himself. Mm -hmm. So position and being a, a minimum space, you the minimum space you take, you take the better it is. And second, it's empathy. Uh, as the great Robert Kappa said, love the people and let them understand. I mean, it's, uh, it's important to, uh, 
uh, minimize your presence to create a bonding with the people who are there. Uh, while I was walking and having a little phone with your little tripod, I mean, uh, helps you to blend in. And uh, uh, there was a girl who stopped me and told me, please don't show my face because my mother doesn't know that I'm here. Wow. I found another, another guy who waved me from his bed. He was in full recovery. And he said, at what time you are hearing this? Because I want to call my mom. And, other, and there was a man, old man, who clearly, I mean, he was, I mean, he has just made it and told me, have a great day, good work. Uh, these are part of, uh, of the job. I mean, blending in and using your phone to minimize the impact on the people. Otherwise, you don't want to look at people through a piece of metal and a piece of glass. You yeah. want to have the eye contact and the phone helps you. Yeah, you're breaking down the barriers. I fully appreciate that. Now, th this clip that we have queued up here to play at the moment, yeah. um, th this is this uh, is this double take? Yes, this is double take. Double take is, is a great uh, in, in a great addition to my workflow. Um, maybe we can uh, yeah, put it on hold, please. I want to just say a few things. Mm -hmm. um, what's my job? I go out, I'm in Bangladesh, let's say, covering the Rohingya crisis. I go out early in the morning at uh, like 8 o'clock at 7 p.m., which, by the way, it's midnight in Bangladesh. My piece is aired in our main, in my news bulletin, main edition, uh, 7 p.m. Italy time. So there is such, what's my, what's my chance? My chance is just rebroadcasting. Uh, putting online on my social media, on the company social media, the piece which has been aired at 7 p.m. So it's just after 7 p.m. Instead, my workflow is different. Thanks to the phone, from 9 o'clock in the morning, the first step I put into the refugee camp, uh, the first story I find, I can work on it with LumaFusion, with my phone, uh, also with still pictures, and I can uh, upload them on Twitter, on uh, um, on uh, 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 on Instagram, on Facebook. So uh, I think that this is the point, Glenn. Uh, journalism will never change. Journalism is about storytelling, sources, double checking, uh, and so on, ethics, and so on. What is changing is the workflow. We have to serve multiple platforms. We have to serve people who are spread, as Philip said before, all over the place. They are not anymore in front of TV. So this is why we need to be active for, from the first minute we are on the field. Let's watch the, the double take, uh, the double take clip. Is there sound on it, Nico? You can talk yeah. over it if not. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm just, uh, I, I hope that Elliot can. Uh, Every day, I yeah. would say it's a real privilege because you can really understand how this uh, fight can be difficult, demanding, and tough. But this is Via Veneto, the very famous street of La Dolce Vita. And what I can say is that this is the most crowded time of the day in Rome now. Uh, the situation on the island is exploded also because of the new uh, policy by uh, the new government uh, which was elected uh, last year. And um, so do you mind me asking Nico, like has that content with the picture in picture from Double Take, has that been used in broadcast or are you using just on social media or? No, uh, no that, that's the nice thing. I mean, uh, when I told you in the beginning, I wanted to take uh, full control of the process. At the mm -hmm. same time, you have a doubt. You don't want to do, you don't want to, I mean, uh, ruin your journalism because you want to want to do two things at the same time. So this is why you use a, also a phone, you use very uh, essential tools mm -hmm. because you want to keep your journalistic standard as high as it was. You mm -hmm. want to just complement it with the, uh, with the good uh, visual storytelling. Mm -hmm. And double take, I love it, double take, because uh, I was covering that uh, protest in uh, um, in Lesbos, in Greece, or I was into the uh, ICU, or I was driving my car, and it's easy. You can just go, I mean, go record it, record your clip, 
and uh, in uh, in a few minutes you are already online and it's nice because you show the place and you show also the journalists so it's a it's, it's a sort of 360 degree view let's say mm -hmm. uh, and the presence of the journalist makes uh, makes of course the difference in the in the frame so uh, I love it and it's part of the workflow I was uh, telling um, earlier I mean I was driving to uh, cover a story of uh, uh, Caritas ending out help for elder for poor elders in their in their houses and while driving to that place I saw I saw the, empty, the empty streets the most crowded street in Rome I saw it empty I said that's the story I want I want to tell so I started with dub, double take and uh, in a few minutes I was on Twitter and I was uh, on, um, uh, on 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 my company's social media very good, very good. Uh, we're, we're nearly running out of time before we take the questions, Nico, but I have one question for you, um, just to get a, a little point in in relation to the gear. So it came, it came up in the discussion earlier on today in relation to um, how you deal with, with you know, uh, social distancing when you're interviewing and so on and so forth. So I'm, I'm assuming that it's particularly in the type of environments that you're working in right now, that audio is quite a challenge. How are you getting around yeah. the limitations of, of social uh, this distancing? This is not a broom. This is a, uh. a boom pole which you can make it longer if you want. Mm -hmm. And uh, this helps you to keep uh, the distance. And uh, it's mandatory, my company, from the beginning of uh, my my company worked well, very well, I have to say, with safety, with our safety, with our PPE, and also with this kind of rules. We are not allowed to use body mount uh, microphones. And we are using boom poles, which in Italy are basically impossible to be, to be fine. Mm -hmm. and to be found and uh, uh so that's that's why i have to tell you that there is a picture which uh, can be put on screen if uh, if anything yeah mm. look this is uh this is um uh, an interview i was doing in in bergamo why i was using the the that's a sort of paradox why you go into an icu which is the most contaminated area in the world with the phone and you and you use a um a mirrorless for your interview because of, because again we are back in get, we are coming back to the zoom because with with with, the, with changing the lens i can be away from the subject but at the same time i can do a nice framing using the phone would have been more complicated and there is also another little tiny detail which seems strange but it's true when you use this mm. and when you when you use the long i mean cable it's the phone is light so it's very easy that trying to move and keep the the boom pole on for like 20 minutes 15 minutes you can tip over the phone because the phone is very light but okay. that's just the secondary aspect yeah very good okay great um i think we need to try and take some questions because there's quite a queue of them coming in so let's have a look at the first one uh it's from angel kyakyo who was one of our speakers last week uh and he says hi um did your experience in war zones help you uh working during the lockdown of course because it's uh it's a, I mean, I call it tactical approach. When you go out, uh, usually when we usually go out, let's say to do interview about the sale, you go out, you hit a few spots, you don't like it, you change the place, you change the neighborhood, you can go around for an entire day. This time is, is this time instead, it's, it's like being in a high risk area. So you have to plan everything carefully, going out, hitting the target, thinking about the extraction. So it's uh, everything has to be very, very well planned. Tactical approach again. And you have also to think about the psychology of people. People are under stress. Uh, box pops are getting more and more difficult because people where, are, where they are in line, they don't want to be, let's say, queuing to enter a supermarket. They don't want to be disturbed. They don't want to talk to you. So you need a, a, a lot more care, a lot more empathy to get box pops and when you go inside stores and the phone can be a very very good tool in this kind of environment uh, you are most of the time being rejected because um, people are afraid that you are taking picture of uh, uh, not respecting social distancing uh, not and not using gloves i mean everybody every shop owners or every i mean place which is still on which is still open the people are working there are afraid that the camera can expose them. It's this is very I mean, very common. I mean, it's something which is uh, it's it's in this psychological part. It's very 
uh, reminds me of what you do in a, in a, in a conflict zone. Yes. Mm, very good. Okay, great. And uh, let's take another question. So Skip Hunt has asked, Nico, when 360 content needs to be edited, is that edited in LumaFusion 2? Yes, but I usually, uh, I have to tell you that in the last, let's say, year, I, I mean, I stopped using the, I mean, I saw the, the fill the fill piece with the little wall defect inside. And uh, I'm not, I, mean, I have to tell you that I'm, I'm behind. I want to get back to use uh, 360, but just uh, for the nice shot you can, you can have using a pole, especially in a high rise and things like that. But uh, I have to still working. I have to, I mean, I have to, to work on, on them. I mean, on, on this kind of approach too. Okay, I, I I will mention just to to skip that. Yeah, it, LumaFusion can support three hundred and sixty content. If that yeah. is kind of part of the question, I'm not too sure. Another question, Penny De Falco says, Nico, how do you find LumaFusion integrating video from multiple video file types from different video recording devices? It's a good question too. Yeah, the mixed cameras. Any issues? No, 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 not really. The important is that you. I mean, I usually tell to my let's say students, we really are our, our fellow colleagues. Don't go out in the field without having tested your equipment back at home. That's good advice. I mean, yeah. Do a few dry run because that's when you have problems. You go out, okay, I've read the manual, I've watched the tutorial, everything will be fine. And then you find out something wrong, that there is something wrong. So always do dry runs. Always, I mean, the, 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 the most exciting part of this new age of, uh, of uh, storytelling, honestly, is learning. We learn something every day. I just told you about 360. Uh, I stopped using the 360 camera a year ago. I don't even know why, because I had other things I wanted to put my hands on. And now I feel that I have to put my hands back on it. I want to go ahead. So it's always learning, learning, learning. And believe me, it's, and you know better than me, it, it's exciting. It's, it's a big pleasure. Yeah, it can be expensive too, but on that bombshell, we'll, yeah, we'll yeah, man, don't send this to my wife, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you and you and me both. Uh, <laughs> uh, should be one more question there. I hope. Uh, yeah, here you go, Al Alicia Arona. Have you thought to make a profile of some of the patients? Everyone is talking about how the situation is influencing people outside hospitals, but not really how people, how sick people, I guess, are feeling. Uh, th that's a great question. Usually, this is what I do in word zones. In word zones, the dead people are just numbers. Uh, they have no faces, no names, no stories, and that's terrible. And honestly, it's happening the same year in Italy. But there is there is something. I mean, uh, what I see from the media, but I'm seeing the same from the U.S. media too, from U.K. media too. Uh, it's a storm, it's a flow of, of news every day and uh, affected people uh, take long to, re to full recover. Mm -hmm. So I think that you are gonna see those stories uh, coming out in the, in, in the next weeks. Yeah, and I, you would wonder if people basically who are, are infected are documenting that journey themselves. Again, you know, we've spoken multiple times about how smartphones are ubiquitous and more and more people are turning to just switching the camera on, talking to the camera as a vlogger, albeit just impromptu. So yeah, yeah, I think you're right. It'll be interesting to see as this starts to ease what, what may happen basically in the coverage of it from a U UGC mm -hmm. point of view. But as journalists, it's our responsibilities. We have to go now let's start, let's say in Italy we have been talking about phase two which means that slowly slowly uh, the shops and a few shops and a few places are gonna reopen not schools mm -hmm. and uh, but that's the I need I think that as as, uh, as a media we need a phase two uh, we also us as a media we need a phase two we have to start telling giving faces and names and stories to the numbers mm -hmm. Okay, very good, really, really, really good. Um, we are going to hop, but you're going to come back to us in about 60 minutes for the panel discussion, yeah? Nico, thank you so much for sharing your story with us. You're an inspiration, mate. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you.